This is kind of funny because when it comes to the one year, two year, three year later type of videos that we make on prospects once in a while, this one right here, it's actually kind of accurate. Because today we're going over a player that was drafted in the 2020 NHL Entry Draft. And if you remember your drafts correctly, you might remember that the 2020 NHL Draft did not take place in July like most of the other drafts do. This draft instead was held in October of 2020. So just for the semantics, it's kind of funny that we're doing the two years later because yeah, almost two years ago to the day this player was drafted by the Detroit Red Wings. We're going over to a guy that was one of the top players in the entire selection of guys, and ever since that draft, he has proven to many that he probably, maybe, should have gone a little bit higher. I don't know. You can make your conclusions at the end of the video, but today we're going over Detroit Red Wings' fourth overall pick from the 2020 draft, Lucas Raymond. Because boy, oh boy, I know we've talked a ton about Raymond over the years, but just these staple videos, I feel, the X year later videos, these are kind of like the bookmarks that really define what a player has done in the past calendar year's worth of play. And so, without further ado, let's talk about the guy that the Red Wings have sort of entrusted to becoming a number one winger in the future? Heck, you could debate he's a number one winger today. Lucas Raymond was taken fourth overall by the Red Wings, as we said, and back in this time frame, he was supposed to be a guy that was going somewhere in this range. You had scouting outlets like Elite Prospects saying, hey, he should even be taken third overall. ISS had him at five, Future Considerations had him at four, the lowest ranking on here was Craig Button, who had him at number nine, but all the other rankings kind of had him in the three, four, five, six-ish territory of the draft. So when he inevitably went fourth, it was seen by many people as a pretty okay pickup, and a lot of Red Wings fans were saying, hey, Steve Eiserman had some incredible things to say about this guy. There were so many good qualities to his game. Just the awareness, the defensive responsibility, not to mention the puck skills, the flair, the playmaking. He was sort of like a Mitch Marner, but Swedish. And even though he had himself all of these skills, he didn't really produce all too well in the SHL that year. This is because Forlunda was a pretty good team, and you had yourselves a guy who was only 17, 18 years old being put in the bottom of the lineup, and for the most part, it was kind of understandable why a guy like Raymond wasn't really given the best opportunity to succeed. The SHL is not a development league, it is a pro hockey league in and of itself, so these teams are playing games to win, not really playing games to develop players like guys in the A AHL or maybe in the junior leagues would be instead. After Raymond was drafted by the Red Wings, you had yourselves the guys on top of Raymond, Byfield, Stutzla, and Lafreniere, all making the NHL and the AHL right away. Raymond did not follow that same path. Instead, he went back over to the SHL for 2020-2021, playing for Forlunda, where he had 18 points in 34 games. Now, that point metric was a little bit better than what it had been before, but it still wasn't particularly great. He also was a point per game for Team Sweden at the World Juniors, which was pretty good to see, but for the most part, a lot of what Raymond had to do and offer for the Frölunda team was more evident in the highlights than the score sheet itself. Fans were looking at SHL games and saying, hey, look at this guy, he's actually a pretty competent hockey player who's just not really being given the best opportunity to produce a whole bunch of points. He's pretty quick, he's got good IQ, he's got good skills, and he's got a motor. Even though one may disagree the label of the Mitch Marner comparison because, hey, Marner had a whole bunch of points with the London Knights, Raymond is not producing, how can you say that they're the same type of player? But when you watched these guys, it was the on-ice impact and what they were able to do with the puck that made them so comparable. Eventually, Lucas Raymond had himself his debut season with the Detroit Red Wings, and this is where things started to make sense. Not only did Raymond show off very well in the limited showcases he had with the Red Wings in earlier tournaments and other prospect things, but when Lucas Raymond made his debut with the team in 2021-2022, boy oh boy was he an absolute stud. He played on the first line with Dylan Larkin and Tyler Bertuzzi, at least in the games where Tyler Bertuzzi was allowed to play. Cough, cough, no Canadian games allowed. But for Raymond, the guy was going out there and absolutely playing his game. He wasn't being thrown at the bottom of the lineup like he was in Forlunda, and he was given opportunities on the power play to get points. 
Raymond ended off 21-22 with 82 games played with 23 goals and 34 assists for 57 points. He was one of the top rookies in the entire point race, and he also had a pretty good run at the start of the season for the Calder. Now, at the end of the year, he wasn't one of the three finalists. That honor belonged to Micah Bunting, Trevor Zegers, and fellow Red Wing Moritz Sider. But for Lucas Raymond, this is a guy that in his very early showcase in the National Hockey League, as a 19-20 year old, mind you, he had gone out there and done some incredible things. Not only did he have point production metrics that were similar to guys like Steve Eiserman and Gordie Howe as a teenager in the Red Wings organization, but you saw the maturity. You saw the complexity to his game that allowed him to actually maneuver around the ice with the swagger and confidence that he needed to succeed at the National Hockey League level. When he comes down the boards and he's approached by a four-checker, he's able to dangle by them pretty easily. When he's maneuvering the wing and the power play, he's able to make the correct pass most of the time, which usually leads to a scoring chance. It's only going to be a matter of time before Raymond is a primary number one penalty killer for the Red Wings and a guy that can be relied upon in all situations. Sure, he kind of needs to improve his defensive game just a tad. Obviously, he's only 19, 20 years old, so a guy playing in the NHL for one season is not going to be perfect defensively, but based off of the adjustments and the confidence level that he played with in 21-22 in the offensive zone with his skills, with his motor, and with his overall role with the team, I mean, being a first-line player right off the bat is not an easy task. There's so much to believe in when it comes to the future of Lucas Raymond that for myself, like many other Red Wings fans, all we got to do is just wait and see what happens next, because since getting 57 points in his rookie year, it's easy to go out there and say, hey, next year he's probably going to be a bit better, right? Bearing any sophomore slump knock on wood that doesn't end up happening, we probably are looking at a maybe 80, 90 point ceiling player in the NHL. I mean, if Mitch Marner is a comparable, Marner is a 100 point caliber guy. I know he hasn't really gotten there yet, but he's on his way. And if Raymond can become sort of like that, a Swedish version of a Mitch Marner or a Swedish version of a Patrick Kane-esque with more of a two-way element to his game as well, I think there really is so much to look forward to when it comes to the record books, when it comes to the future top six of the wings. You still got Dylan Larkin, or at least for now you do, and you've got Bertuzzi. I mean, there's a trade conversation or two surrounding his name that kind of pops up once in a while, but still... This team is kept together in the way that it has been, and with the way that some of these other guys are going to be moving into the system, I mean, lo and behold, what happens when Marco Casper and Lucas Raymond are able to play together? That's going to be pretty cool. If Philip Zadina is able to go out there and actually fulfill the potential that he has, and he eventually becomes a superstar alongside of Raymond, there's a lot of potential here. And two years from when Raymond was removed from the draft... It's looking more and more like this was the best pickup available at fourth overall. So much so that you could debate that maybe he was even more valuable than the Byfields or the Lafreniere's. It's going to be tough to battle with Tim Stutzla, but as the years go on, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a good matchup in that respect. Maybe Stutzla Raymond should have been the one and two conversation for 2020 and not Lafreniere Byfield. I don't know. Talk in the comments all your thoughts about Lucas Raymond and where he has been two years removed from the NHL draft and how he went from a low-producing Swedish forward with some skill and two-way ability to what he is today, an absolute superstar young player for the Red Wings that might actually be on the cusp of breaking out in the best way possible over the next few seasons. Talk in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.